when people told themselves their past with stories, explained their present with stories, foretold the future with stories. The best place by the fire was kept for the storyteller. between my fingers. Come and see. It's quite a mess. Ugh. Good. Yuck. They're foul. They don't even know the meaning of the word bone. What a noodle you are. Frightened of a little thing. You're frightened of rats. Everyone's frightened of rats. They're ratish. It's normal. Why? You seen the rat? You're shuddering. So you? Mm -hmm. Now it's getting dark. Don't like the dark either. Mm -mm. Come here and bark a bit. <sighs> what should we do until morning? Well, I could tell you the story of the boy who set forth to learn what fear was. You mean he didn't know? No. He wasn't frightened of rats or bats or cats or things beginning with this? No, a rare boy. The second son of the second cousin of my second wife's second niece, who died and left her husband, a tailor, two sons. The one good, the other good for nothing. And he was called Fear Not. What time do you call it? Don't know, Dad. What time do you call it? Lord, give me patience. Well, have you got the buttons? What buttons? The buttons I sent you out for. Do you know, Dad, I completely forgot them buttons. Tell the truth, I stood and played under my sweetheart's window. Oh, she's a lovely. Did you hear that? He forgot. Never fear. I'll go back. And forget again? No. You go, son. I'll go in the morning. The morning's no use. Go now. I would. But the dark comes and I don't like the forest. It's all shadows. There's trolls in there and dragons. Let me go. I don't mind shadows. I never saw a dragon. Be off with you then. What are you going for? Uh, don't tell me to see dragons. No, uh, ogres. Buttons! Buttons. So off goes Fear Not to fetch buttons. But the village bully's watching his skip and his gormless grin. He's ripe for ragging. Oh yes, they'll fetch him a fearful fright. I am a wordle, only twice as bad. Never mind. I want your bag of buttons. Sorry, they're for my dad. Give them to me, or I'll mutton you. Mutton me? I'll give you a right flummox. That doesn't sound very nice. Give, give me, me the buttons! buttons. Ah! 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 
and back he goes, our boy, to his dad's house. Full of tales of a wordle, only twice as bad, I'm sorry about the buttons, and did you know a wordle has three voices? And the father sets him outside with 40 shillings in a purse and tells him to go off and learn something. Phil considers this. He's always wanted to know how to shudder. The knack of it's eluded him. He'll set forth to learn what fear is, with nothing to guide him but a bag of shillings, a fiddle, and a fool's errand. Good day, young man. <laughs> now, isn't this a lucky meeting? Good day, sir. I can tell by the gleam in your eye you have a sweetheart. I do, sir. And what's your name? I don't know. Ah, well, what's your name? Mine's Mackay, but I don't mind it. Mine's fear not. And there you go, as me poor mother would say. Have you got a mother? I'm afraid I don't. Ah, well, we all had one once, and that's the main thing. Now, your sweetheart, is she dark or fair? Oh, dark, sir. Like Arabia. Like Arabia, oh, happy day. And a happy day it is for you, young man. For in this bag, I have a scarf of silk, direct from the shores of Araby. Here, I insist you take it, and may you learn a name with it. Thank you, mister. And it's because you're such a fine fellow, I'm only going to ask you to pay me what I paid for it. A double Persian. How much is that? How much you got? Forty shillings. Nothing like that. Barely half. Less than two thirds. I'd like the scarf, because I've set forth to learn things, you see. And to learn a name is something. But I'll give you all I have if you could learn me what fear is. You will give me 40 shillings if I can frighten you? Gladly. <laughs> I see, said the blind man. Let me think. Shut your eyes. Is something the matter? No, no, just give me a minute. What do you reckon that is at your throat? I don't know, sir. A knife? And a sharp knife. Slit a hair clean in two. That's marvellous! Slit a throat without touching the sides. That's a good knife, then. Certainly is and will do for you, young man. Unless you part with your bag of shillings. I can't do that. For I must learn what fear is. And I'm not frightened of you, Mr Mackay. You're a friend! <laughs> oh, no. No, no, we are. We're friends. Goodness, I'm sure we are. Let me take you down the lane, where I think I can arrange a little case of the shudders for you. Follow me. Where do we go? To a pond, by a hedge, by a field, by a mill, by a town. And in that pond is a fearful sight. So fearful. Think what fearful is. And add ten. And shall I shudder? No question. If you survive. And off they went to most fanciful peregrination. Until they came to a pond by a hedge, by a field, by a mill, by a town. And as they arrived with day ending, they saw folk rushing from the mill, still dusted with flour, and would not stop to swap words. And shouted, Be clear before dark falls! Beware the pond! and other such unwelcomes. Here. Is this where I learned to shudder, Mr. Mackay? The trick is, you must plunge into the pond, and fear will swim up to greet you. Splendid! Ah! Oh, it's a treat! Will you join me? No, thanks. I must retire and get us beds for the night. You must sleep after a good fright. Good luck. Thank you. Now, this green pond is not all welcome cool and water lilies. Deep in its green deep is a terrible thing. And it peers up through the green and sees a pair of feet. It's a man. Oh, dear, oh, dear. So there he is, our man Fear Not, dangling his feet in the pond, waiting to shudder, wondering how, when all of a sudden, and who would believe it, the water begins to gather and froth and swirl. And below me, if a ring of sad beauties don't appear, eyes closed and melancholy. These are the sisters of the deep, 
and their dance is a welcome to drowning. Come in, come in, they seem to say, and fear not looks on enchanted by their loveliness. Then he does what he always does when this mood takes him. Now why do the village folk avoid this pretty scene? Why do men tremble as night falls and the moon gleams its silver on the pool? Because, my dearios, my darlings, these are the daughters of the terrible thing. Water in their veins, water in their eyes. They have but two tasks, to drown men and to drown women. Come in, come in, they seem to say. Come in and sip our bitter beer. Come in and meet our master. Do you know who I am? I don't think so. You're not a wordle, some sort of terrible thing. Exactly. These are my pretties. They attempt to kill men like you, and I drown them. Why? Because, but first, give me your bird. Its song is so beautiful. I can't do that. I have to make it. Look. Where does the singing come from? It holds. Let me try. You must learn to play. But your bird, where does its song come from? The song? Hmm. Oh, far away. Ireland. Which direction? Over there. Many lefts and many rights. Ireland. I'll go there. That way, you say? That's it. Make it sing some more and then I'll go. And our boy plays some more until the creature leaves his daughters and his green pool and his endless drowning and heads off in search of Ireland and the bird that sings. And he lives there still, for all I know. What a hero! What a hero! Not one feast but twenty, seventy-eight gifts, four offers of marriage, and much playing of the fiddle. By morning, Mr. Mackay, self-appointed manager of heroes and historian of Fear Not Exploits, has noted details of the whereabouts of trolls and terrors and dragons and demons and untold, unsolved mysteries. Thus commissioned, the two companions set off, and it isn't till late the following afternoon, head still muddled by cider, that Fear Not remembers to cut the tinker's ears, retrieve his 40 shillings and ask him where they're heading next. Well, I have the route to a fine terror, but I must have reward. I have promised you my shillings when I shudder. But give me only your fist, which I like not. One little misunderstanding and I'm flush for me pains. Come, Paris. You are blessed with great courage. I am cursed with a little cunning. I cheat for trifles, while you can move mountains. Is that fair, I ask you? I'm sorry. Take my money. I've offended you. No, no. I shall struggle on for nothing. We go to yonder castle where none survive a night. So I will learn to shudder at last. Now this castle they approach is a graveyard of hopes. The king driven out, the rooms abandoned. Only fools seek shelter there. For this is a troubled land and bad holds court. Look. There it is on the horizon, a place brooding. Wait here. I should take things with me. Take a sword. Take two. These three things are enough. Or not, as the case may be. 
and they leave 75 of my gifts should I not return. Do not leave them here, for you know how it is with me. I'll be forced to steal them and desert you. Have a little courage, Mr. Mackay. <laughs> Godspeed! Fear not. Ah, <laughs> oh, lovely. All lovely. A little courage, Mr. Mackay. Hello, there's only half here. Where's the rest of me? Shuddering. Lovely. Ah, oh, lovely. Fear not, for lack of a fright settles down for the night. But what's this? Mr. Mackay? Oh, Mr. Is it all up with you? So cold. You were my first and only friend. My friend, and now so cold. Let me warm you a little. That's better. See, have I not warmed you? demon and I'll cut off your head and then there'll be three parts to marry. What? I know it's not you. It is me. Dead again, are you? No! Come closer. Please, I'm terrified. I came with my little courage to find you and it's quite used up. How many gifts did I leave? Well, I only counted 74 to begin with and I ate two, well, two and a half, but there's still plenty. What's the name of my true love? Well, how can I know if you don't? Then it is you. But of course it's me. And you came in to find me? 
It's my lot. I try to break the mould and be decent, and I get a knife with. Shut up and come here and hug me. No. Oh, and hug him he did, and full of glee they searched the castle from top to toe, and behind the farthest door of the highest floor they found a room, and in that room was gold. Such golden as they might have thrown it out of the window for a week and still be swamped. And they shared it half and half, and a bit for luck, and never have two men danced more nor merrier. And from a distance, you would have seen the castle shake off its grey drab and sunbathe. So he never learned to shudder? <sighs> Well, the fact of the matter is that, fear not, ask such questions of the tinker all the way home. Why haven't I learned to shudder? What can I tell my father, and so on? And the tinker pointed to their gold and said, are there not sufficient riches that you must be frightened as well? And so they went on, fear not, complaining of fearing not, him muttering, until they arrived at last at the gate of fear not's house. We must say goodbye, then. You must meet my family. No, families don't like me. Of course they will. You're my friend. You must come in. As me dear old mother used to say, leave them while they want you to stay. No, thank you. What's this for? You must give that to your father. That's right. But I have not learned to shudder. Goodbye, Mr. Mackay. Goodbye, friend. It's you, at last! Come quick, come quick! She swoons since she heard you've gone. Nothing will revive her. I don't know her name. Lydia. 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 Look, would you look at that? My sweetheart. <laughs> What's happened? Lily, you've done it. Tell me what. You taught me. I've been so far, so long, and all it needed was the thought of who's in you to teach me what fear was. <laughs> I shuddered. I shuddered. And so the boy who set forth to learn what fear was, learned it at home. And he married his sweetheart with her name and all, and never left again. Mr. Mackay told me that story a long time ago when I was very young, and I didn't know the half of it. <laughs>